Yeah. I built these cabinets by myself. Did it all by myself. <sighs> Want to learn how? I'll show you. I need to do something with my shoes. My shoes are all over the place. And I have a lot of shoes. I've collected a lot of shoes for a lot of years. I actually haven't bought a new pair of shoes and well, certainly not in the last year because I've been on the austerity plan and it doesn't allow for shopping. But I, I just, the storage that I have for them is inadequate. I'm going to build a floor to ceiling shoe cabinet. Well, I'm not going to go quite to the ceiling because I want it to be in alignment with the curtains, but we're going to build storage for my shoes in this corner. This corner is really unusable. I mean, I, it's got, it's just this space that's really just enough place for a hamper or a trash can. There's just not any space there. So we're going to see if we can't uh, make it a little more useful. I opted to do as much of the work outside as possible to keep the mess outside. The first thing I wanted to do was get some paint on the boards. I painted first a coat of primer, and because they are 94 inches tall, I put them down on my sawhorses, also known as a couple of cinder blocks that I found by the trash can, painted the ends, and then stood them up and painted the middle. That way I could get to both ends because I couldn't quite reach 94 inches if they were standing up the whole time and bending over was killing my back. I'm using a work switch driver and I put in my 15 16 spade bit. This is great because it has a nice little sharp point that you could put right in the exact spot that you want it. So I would carefully guide that into the exact position that I wanted it and then start out nice and slow and just slowly and easily let the machine do the work for you. You don't need brute strength when you got power tools. They do it for you. Thank God. I created my template. So this piece of paper is the width of the board. This is my shoe. Now if I just put my shoes on the racks like that, it's going to stick out that much. And I really want this to be as shallow as possible. So I want to give it an angle. I want to have it as much of an angle as I can to actually keep it. And it means it's okay if it sticks out a little bit. There's going to be curtains. So I have about that much play. So let's see. If I give it like that. So that's, that's about the angle that I want. So I'm just going to, yikes, put my finger in the frame. I want it right there and right there. So that's going to be those two points. I'm going to create whatever that is. That's my, uh, I don't know. I'm winging it. <laughs> so I'm going to drill a hole here and a hole here. They're five inches apart and that is going to be what I base the entire template on. So my rail first railing is going to be seven inches up I'm and then started drilling holes. I found that if I pushed all the way through, it gave me a jagged, not very pretty end. I would drill down until I could see light through the other end. And then once that hole was there, I'd come in, flip it over and come in from the other side to get a nice clean finish hole. I have to say that drilling the holes turned out to be surprisingly easy. The total time involved in drilling out all the boards was maybe 
two hours, but I was also filming it and moving the camera around, so probably would take about an hour and a half for most people. You might choose to paint these as well. I'm never going to see them. There's going to be PVC pipe in there. I'm lazy, I didn't choose to. Now we're going to mount these boards. I want them to get right up to where my existing curtain rod is. Because I have molding on the floor, I made a small notch in each of the boards to accommodate that so that the boards could fit as flush as possible to these walls. Now, I would love to say that these walls are perfectly square and perfectly flat, but this building is older than I am. So we know they're not. I have in my drawer of things that I have purchased and not used or reused or taken apart, you know, the junk drawer. I have a bunch of these little angle things. I have my box of drywall anchors and screws because as much as I would like to hit wood, I'm, I'm thinking there's a good chance of hitting wood since I'm right here next to the window, but maybe not, probably. Actually, no, I'd have to be right there. Chances are I'm not hitting wood. Hey, it's like my dating life. One of the things that I always hate is you gotta pre-drill the wood before you put the screw in. And that has always meant like switching screwdrivers. And I kind of like the fact that I can just flip it over and make at least one thing a little bit easier. I had half inch PVC pipe cut in 36 inch widths for this side and 24 inch widths for that side. And we're going to feed these through the holes. Do this this way. Yeah, I gotta come all the way through on that side. It's gonna be tough to film. I prefer to have my PVC pipe cut at the mom and pop hardware store. Uh, sometimes you pick it up at the big warehouse home improvement place and you got to cut it yourself. Handy to have a pipe cutter then. Ta-da! I don't know 
know about you, but I feel pretty pleased with myself. I am exhausted, but I am super satisfied. Uh, this video is sponsored by Works Tools. They gave me a switch driver, which made this all possible. I couldn't have done it without. And I have good news for you. We are giving one of you your own Works switch driver. So drop your comment down below and I'm going to have a random drawing from all of those who leave their comments. I will announce the winner in my upcoming video, how to decorate your bedroom for a better night's sleep. Or something like that. That's kind of what I'll call it. I don't know. I'm tired, but I'm like stoked. How awesome is that? Like, I have a place for all my shoes. Okay, in hindsight, uh, things that I wish that I had done differently. I, I let the guy cut these at 24 inches and they're a little short and that may become problematic. We may, we'll have to see. Uh, so I wish I had these on this railing just a little bit longer for so they're a little more secure in there. So that is one thing that I would do differently. I would allow more space for my boots. Uh, my cowboy boots fit just fine. My taller boots don't. Things I think I did very well. I totally dig the little clips. I did little clips to keep my floppy boots from flopping over because some of them stand up and some of them just go eh. so that keeps them nice and a little tidier would have liked to have gone up higher but then what's the point because I can't reach it for those of you who don't have as many boots yay you can get a lot more shoes um, you can see if I had if I just had the seven inch apart seven inches seems to be perfect for my high heels and for for the low heels so that seven inch space is perfect for those types of shoes but for my boots i really wish that i allowed 16 inches i cheaped out on the space i should have given it a little more room those are my criticisms um considering that i am not a carpenter but having a good tool made it really easy Hey, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and drop your comments down below and love you bunches. I will talk to you very soon.